Lots of video games require you to shoot things, whether it's a first person perspective, a third person perspective, or pretty much anything in between. Let's be real, we see a lot of guns in games. But sometimes, like a lot of things in video games, there are concepts and things about them that just don't make any sense. So let's poke some fun at video game guns and get started off with number 10. First, we gotta talk about shotguns, of course. It always seems like in video games, shotguns are basically everything or nothing. Sometimes they're completely useless or they're overkill, right? You know what I mean? Like we have games like Gears of War where people argue uh, how a shotgun works, but ultimately, point blank, you can explode people. In, in some games with powerful shotguns, you back up five feet and then that bullet spray will barely even hit anyone. Then you have other games where they might mess things up, uh, like a, a certain shotgun in the new Modern Warfare that you can basically snipe people with. So what are shotguns in games? Get it right, is it either a super crazy shotgun or a high powered sniper rifle shotgun? We were searching the internet and just looking for like memes and weird jokes about stuff like this and it seems like everybody has a problem with just how shotguns work in general. Still, definitely shotgun debates will always be a thing, especially because a lot of the times they just make no sense. Now next over at number nine, since this is a list about things that don't make sense, can we talk about the fact that in a lot of games it seems like a recurve bow somehow kicks way more ass than any other machine gun or high powered rifle in that same game? In a lot of games, multiplayer, otherwise maybe something like Far Cry, a simple common recurve bow, a basic bow and arrow can dominate a war more than an actual gun that fires bullets. Now I guess like, let's be real, the, the impact, the penetration of a massive arrow into someone's skull it's definitely gonna do a lot of damage but in so many games I've seen a bow and arrow blow away a dude way more effectively than an actual gun and that's kind of silly you know what I think the real answer is like okay of course like none of it matters this doesn't matter but a bow and arrow is really badass sometimes whether it's Rambo or Lara Croft whoever it is bows can just be pretty sick dude so I guess maybe it does make sense that they kick ass in games I don't care Moving over to number eight, did you ever notice that every game has completely different ballistics? Every game aims for realistic ballistics and actual real-time bullet physics and simulations, but then again, all games still manage to have completely different ways of shooting. This is just another dumb example, but we were inspired by this image. We just wanted to point this out. Video game physics in a nutshell. Every game, the way a bullet is fired from a gun and how and where it travels is totally different. Yet in real life, when you fire a gun, because there are rules in our actual natural earth, it's always gonna work the same way. Uh, granted, if you're firing with a different gun, different power, different caliber, different wind speed, of course, there's all those things. But do you understand what I'm getting at? It's just like every game is different, yet in the real world, it's all the same. It's just a dumb thing to point out. Maybe there should be some universal rule for how guns work in a video game. I've seen people argue for that, but I don't think that's any fun. Does one game actually have perfect video game gun physics? Uh, perfect simulation accurate firing? Maybe, probably, I don't know. Even if there was, some people would argue about it and hate it anyway. That's just me being cynical. I don't, let's move on. Cause over at number seven, you ever notice that mounted guns are always unlimited ammo? How, how does that work? Especially like if it's on the back of a truck, you know, maybe you're on like an on rail sequence where you have a mounted gun and you just have to fire at things that are pursuing you. Now it can be assumed, like we can, you know, try and be real and assume that the, the truck you're on top of or whatever has a bunch of buckets of bullets down underneath. But even that truck, even that thing that you're on that the gun is mounted on is gonna run out of bullets eventually, right? And that's being generous. That's if we're talking about if it's mounted on a vehicle what if it's just mounted anywhere in the battlefield? There's no crates around you, there's no nothing, it's just you, two sandbags, and a mounted gun that will never stop firing. Maybe it'll overheat, but thankfully, if we're talking about more dumb logic that makes no sense, the gun will overheat and it'll cool down in like two seconds. Cause that's definitely how machinery works, right? You know what the bottom line is, and it's kind of the point of this whole video, is the fact that it doesn't make sense but it's fun. You wanna just fire a bajillion bullets and not worry about them running out or running to go and pick up more and put them in the gun. Sometimes in video games, you want a shooting sequence that just lets you go crazy, lets you go whole hog, lets you go wild. And that's what the mounted guns are totally for, right? But I mean, still, the fact that they never run out of bullets is really stupid. Now over at number six, let's talk about something funny. When you're playing a lot of games, you ever notice that uh, the good guys always have something like an M4, while the bad guys always have AK-47s? I know they're basing it on history, kinda, but, but still, it's like a trope now. It's always like a given, and it's 2019. Not every bad guy is running around with an AK, and definitely not every good guy is running around with an M4. It's almost like predictable at this point. I don't know about you guys, but I've played so many video games, and it just seems like nine times out of 10, it's always gonna be the case. Also, side note, little bonus point, 
points. You ever notice like if there's good guys and bad guys and then there's always like that Russian guy that's got a P90. Whatever he is, there's always that other random guy, that snake in the grass, that maybe enemy, maybe the enemy of my enemy is my friend. He's always got a way cooler gun. I don't know, it's just a funny gaming thing. Kind of weird, wanted to point it out. Now at number five, I don't want to call out any specific game. We don't need to make fun of them, but you, you ever notice some guns, maybe in a first person shooter, the way it's realistically modeled, you know, it looks just like the real gun. It's got all these little bits and pieces on it that are super realistic. Uh, but then when your gun runs out of ammo, say it's like a shotgun with shotgun shells strapped to the side, your gun is out of ammo, but the, there's still shotgun shells on the side of the shotgun. Are there shotgun shells just for show? What the hell? I know that's probably something that some games just never accounted for. It's more of a design thing, but that don't make no sense. You think you're out of bullets. You think you're screwed. You got six of them right there, dude. Take it off your cool looking gun. I know it looks cool, but you need them. Every game is different, of course. Like some games do this. Some games actually do account for this. Props for them, but we just think it's really funny when they don't. That goes even further too. Like when you have a chain of bullets around your chest and it's really just for cosmetic reasons and you can be out of ammo in the game, but you can't actually take off those bullets and put them in your gun. Rambo wouldn't do that. Why am I talking about Rambo so much in this video? I don't know, let's move on. Now down to number four, if we're pointing out things that don't make sense, we gotta talk about like a perspective and sizes and proportions, especially in first person shooters. Perfect example is in Team Fortress 2 when the spy is holding a pistol. The way his arm is situated in perspective of like 2D first person view and the camera <laughs> makes it look like his body must be all sorts of out of whack. A lot of first person shooters actually, the way the gun looks on the screen and where the hand is, uh, technically that person would have the gun like right up to their face. Then there's other games like the original Doom where the gun is completely pointed forward and straight. That's a little bit more realistic, but stuff like the earlier Battlefield games when you're holding up an assault rifle and it takes up like half the screen, these proportions just make no sense. But you wanna know what the honest truth is? If they made it look on screen like how a gun would actually be held if you had a GoPro strapped to your face, it just doesn't look as cool. When developers make video games when they design the way a game looks. They want you to see the gun that they meticulously modeled. They want you to see the cool gun. They want to make you feel cool while you're shooting it. So they're going to position it in a certain way so it looks more pleasing to the eye. That's the honest truth. And although it doesn't make sense, it is satisfying. So you can't really fault them for that too much. Cause down to number three, can we talk about the fact that certain guns just don't explode doors. Like you might find a cheap crappy locked door, but you have a rocket launcher. You fire that rocket launcher at the door and it doesn't do shit. Why is that a thing? Well, of course it, it's a thing because of the limitation of game design, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make any less sense. It's funny in a game like an RPG or something like Fallout, like you may have lasers and grenades and a nuke, but you still need to lock pick a crappy little rusted out door. And if you're not good at lock picking, that's it. Sorry, dude, you can't get through that door despite all of your powerful weaponry. You're up Shit's Creek. It's absolutely dumb. It's absolutely stupid. But on the other hand, if you could just blow your way through anything in a game and get unlimited access, would it still be fun? Some might argue yes. Some might argue that the rules and restrictions that you have to play around with are what makes the game more enjoyable and a bit more challenging and thought provoking. Everybody has different preferences and honestly, we all put up with this stuff. Honestly, if you want a game that can really actually let you blow through pretty much anything you want, go play the original Red Faction. You can fire a rocket launcher into the ground over and over and over again until you build yourself like a big deep Minecraft hole with explosions. I shit you not, that was a thing. And too much of a good thing is sometimes not very good, trust me. You threatening me? Yeah, well, threaten Die this! Scum. But down to number two, if we're talking about gun logic that makes no sense, we have to talk about guns in RPGs. A character gets more powerful, and a lot of times, that same gun they're using is more effective. How does that make sense? Like, just because your attack power is higher, you're a level 100 character, that little dumb pistol that a, lo a low level character would use, you still manage to just be able to blow everyone away with it now because you're just the best? Then on the flip side, we have the complete opposite argument. In games like more equipment based, where the RPG elements are within the weapons themselves, you can have something like two M16s. You could have a level one M16 and a level 20 M16. And that level 20 M16 has drastically higher damage output. H how? how? How does that make sense? Would the, the gun manufacturer inlay the barrel with gold magic that'll make it kill more? That's always what drives people nuts. Even in like games like The Division when you have a high powered gun and you're shooting dudes and they're a bullet sponge and you gotta level up. Like how does any of that make sense? RPG guns are very, very weird. Whether it's the character leveling up or the, gu the gun leveling up. It's funny to actually say that out loud, but it's a thing and we put up with it. 
Now finally, at number one, we have to talk about dumb audio and how this doesn't make sense sometimes. You ever play a game with a sniper rifle and you zoom in to two dudes and then suddenly you can hear their conversation better? It's only happened with a certain specific couple of games. I think one of the Sniper Elite games did it. Other games had it as a bug that was later fixed. Then on a more story reason, some games like you have a gun with like a directional microphone, but when you don't have a directional microphone and you're just zooming in, how can you hear them better? That really doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe the trained sniper is so good that they're actually be able to read lips, and then that's the game's weird way of explaining it, but it still wouldn't explain like how you can actually hear the actual sound. I'm stumbling over this logic because it's really stupid and it's a dumb point, but that definitely just shouldn't be a thing. Most games where it was a problem, it was patched out, but even in some older games, it was just a thing. It was just how it worked, and it was really weird and dumb. And honestly, with a list, all of these points are a perfect example of why we're having fun. All video games are dumb, if you think about it, but it doesn't make them any less fun, and we think that's important. There is a bunch of other weird shit out there that we would love for you guys to point out down in the comments. We're going to be down there, but we could continue more videos like this. So if you have any other suggestions of, of dumb, weird things that guns have done in games, especially if like you're a gun expert or a gun nut or a hunter or whatever, definitely let us know what you're thinking when you play a video game. Regardless, if you enjoyed this video, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.